Living Power with Dan Hurd. Okay, now let's get on with our study. So in Nehemiah chapter 5, we're looking at something that happens in Nehemiah, actually a couple of incidents that happen in Nehemiah's life. Incidents that give us uh, some insight to this man himself. Even though he was the governor of Judah, he, he, you know, he had been appointed as governor by the king, and he was responsible for overseeing the rebuilding of the wall uh, around the temple and basically governing the people, he still had a, a very uh, tender, tender heart. And I want you to see this in chapter 5. So let's just start reading it. I'm going to read it kind of in a story form so that you'll understand what was happening and what he was talking about. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. And what was happening was they were talking, they came together and they said, look, our sons and our daughters, are, are, we've been growing, we're, we're getting to be a large people, but there is a famine in the land. There's a drought going on. And in order for us to stay alive, we've got to get grain. We've got to eat. But remember that one of the reasons that they were sent back to the exile, or sent back from exile, was so that the king could collect taxes. He wanted them to be productive. He wanted them back in their homeland so that they could send the revenue back uh, to, to, the, uh, to the governor, to the king. But what was happening was they were in this famine, and so they were, they were struggling. There was their fields, their crops had died, and things hadn't worked out the way they were supposed to. And so they were having to mortgage their fields, and they were having to borrow money. And what was happening was that as they borrowed money, they were borrowing money from their fellow brothers, their fellow Jews. And it was to, verse 4 said, we've had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. And verse 5 then goes on to say, and although we're of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. They were, that was the tradition. If you couldn't pay the mortgage, if you couldn't pay the bill, then you gave <coughs> your children over into slavery and even yourself. Some of our daughters have been enslaved, but we're powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. And when they heard their outcry and these charges, Nehemiah says, I got angry. I was angry. And I pondered them in my mind and I accused the nobles and officials and I told them, you're charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them. And I said, as far as possible, we've we brought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. And now you're selling your own people, only for them to be sold back to us. They kept quiet because they had nothing to say. So I continued, what you're doing isn't right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? Look at the example that you're setting. Shouldn't we be above that? And I continued and I just said, this is not, this isn't right. I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain, but let's stop charging the interest. Give back to them immediately their fields and their vineyards and their olive groves and their houses and the interest that you're charging them. One percent of the money, grain, new wine and olive oil. Give it back. Don't put them into slavery. That's not right. And so they responded, verse 12, they said, we'll give it back. And we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. And then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and the officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I held them accountable, in other words. And I shook out the folds of my robe and I said, this is the way uh, that, that God should shake us out of our house of possessions if you don't keep your promise. So that may each person be shaken out and empty if you don't follow through. And the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. That shows something about the character of Nehemiah. He had a tenderness for his people. He had a, he had a sense of justice. But he also had a sense of tenderness for his people who were suffering. He was compassionate.